Introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the black trunks, weighing in at 190 pounds with a record of 16 wins, two losses, 10 of those wins coming by way of knockout. He is the number 10 rated contender in the IBF from Maywood, Illinois, Jason Robinson. And to my right, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the blue trunks, weighing in at a very fit 189 and three quarter pounds with a record of 64 wins, four losses, two draws, 40 win of those wins coming by way of knockout. From Los Angeles, California, by way of the Motor City, Detroit, Michigan, he is the former two-time world champion and number four IBF contender, James Lights Out Tony. James, all right, here's the line right here, so you know, right there. There's the line right there. 12 round title elimination bout. Good luck to both fighters, touch them up. Let's go, come out at the belt. And here are the rules once more. No three knockdown rule, nor standing gate count. Fighter can't be saved with the bell in any round, including the final. The headbutt rule, we go to the cards after the fourth round. So Tony says he's good, he looks fit, he is loose. Now let's see if he's got the goods. I noticed yesterday when they had their little pose off after the uh, weigh-in that Jason Robinson really looked much taller than I even expected in seeing the stats over James Lights Out Tony. Tony, just a bigger guy despite the fact that uh, there is not that much weight difference between them, but if you just look at the, the body size structure of these two. I think Robinson's game is going to be to stick and move and make Tony chase him. Arnie Rosenthal, his manager, called him the most disciplined fighter I've ever been around in my career. So he'll need to stick to a game plan here against Tony. He not only is just an excellent fighter with a fighter's mentality, but really knows a lot of tricks, really knows what to do in that ring, knows how to set a trap for an opponent knows how to turn his body, knows how to block a punch with the shoulder. I mean, this guy is an intelligent fighter in that ring. You know, he, he is, and yet there have been times when I've done James Tony's fights or I've seen James Tony fight that he, he does. He's got all the tools in the bag. He just doesn't always use all the tools. Now, he says he's a different guy, and that's what we'll see tonight. All right, beautiful chance. Step up. Determined to not only win the fight, but to knock Robinson out. You heard him tell that to Sean O'Grady earlier tonight. Jason Robinson is a former uh, kickboxer, a three-time kickboxing champion. Says he was able to make the transition pretty good. He got tagged with a good short right hand from James Tony there. And Sean O'Grady, uh, you don't often see, very frankly, kickboxers translate into good fighters. No, it's because they don't plant their feet. What they try to do with Robinson is try to make him settle down more, dig those feet into the canvas. If you're trying to kick six kicks around, you're not really going to plant your feet. With his feet planted, he can punch a bit harder. I'm just trying to work the jab. It's not a powerful jab. Fighting from that southpaw stance, and I tell you, that is bemusing to any fighter in, 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 in boxing. You, you jab with the right hand, your cross is a left cross, and you're throwing a right hook. The, the punches come at you from different angles. Although, James, Tony, you guys talked about it, you alluded to it in the last, in the last conversation about how he has been around the block, he knows what he's doing inside the ring. You know, he probably had been his own worst enemy in the sport of boxing. You talked about his lackluster performances. Sometimes he falls asleep in these fights, and hopefully he doesn't do that here. Well, he says he's a different guy. You saw him switch up for a moment. He went softball for just a moment there. Yeah, I think he was hearing me talking about how confusing that is. Yeah. I think he's doing a good job of body punching here, getting within range. Don't get in a hurry. You know what? You're a professional. Let's see what your, other, what your opponent has. Take your time. You've got 12 to deal with. End of the first round. Feeling out round. I told you this was your huckleberry. Then I tell you this. Now listen. You're a little bit short There's with your Jason jab. Robinson, who we talked about his discipline. He loves to train. Gym rat. He gets always in good shape. Not much of a, a puncher. 
Although he scored 10 KOs in his 16 victories, and as we mentioned, former three-time professional kickboxing champion. Loves the challenge of uh, orthodox boxing, however. Across the way, Freddie Roach giving the instructions to James Tony, And I think we always know that the condition and determination as far as James are concerned are a factor. And he seems to be in good shape for this one. You can't ar ever argue with his opponent list. And he always wanted the toughest guys out there, too. And he says, I'm old school. Studied films, he knows all those tricks. Yeah, he talks about Archie Moore. He talks about Sugar Ray Robinson, as guys uh, he likes to emulate. Ezra Charles, uh -huh. one of the two predominant super middleweights of the mid-90s. The other was Roy Jones. And I tell you, even though those two fought, James Tony became a better fighter. This is a kid in Tony who was a dead-end kid, street kid. He found a direction in boxing, and he just got enamored by the sport. He spent time reading articles. He spent time watching the tapes, watching fights, learning as much as he could about the sport of boxing. It really works. Went left handed again for a moment. He took a shot from Robinson. Jason Robinson seemed very calm about the whole thing. There were some words exchanged at the press conference this week between the two, but basically inspired by some comments from uh, Robinson's manager, Ernie Rosenthal, right, about, uh, about Tony right. being old and that his legacy is old, but uh, and Tony came in looking uh, strongly for Robinson at the press conference and Ernie Rosenthal. <laughs> but, you know, Robinson himself, he's very quiet. Uh, he's a... Uh, doesn't say much, but he admitted to me, he says, I'm real excited about this, and I'm very anxious. This was yesterday at the way, and I'm very anxious to get in that room. Real nice young man. In fact, uh, Arnie Rosenthal, quick to point out, he said, the quiet kids are the ones you have to be concerned with. <laughs> Jason Robinson. Tony looking to load up with that right hand now against the southpaw, come right down the middle. And there it is. It was a little short, though. Southpaws are vulnerable to that punch. A real straight right hand down the pipe, and a real wide left hook. The way they stand their positioning, they're vulnerable to run. Tony is one of, the, one of the great practitioners of the art of blocking a punch with the shoulder and coming right back with the right cross immediately after that. And he'll try to take that jab if he can in that fashion and come back with the right cross right down the middle. This is experience talking. I mean, James Tony, he's been in there with everyone. He knows how to roll a punch. Sometimes it's easier. You don't use as much energy to take the punch and then counter with your own, which is something that he does quite well that you're alluding to. For Robinson, he's got to get on his speed. First thing any aging fighter loses is his speed. Get that speed going, and then everything else kind of falls in place. Work that jab. Switches up again, goes lefty. And don't be afraid to hit James Tony with an uppercut. The way he leans over, he bends at the waist. He, he is vulnerable to that shot, but you got to throw it. Every time he goes lefty, that is Tony goes lefty. Robinson tags him. Robinson's got very nice. He's very rangy, he's using the ring well. Yeah, he's keeping Tony off him pretty well. see the concentration a little upset that he missed an opening there Robinson frowning really concentrating coming to the end of round number two well, a reminder, Sunday is at 8 p.m. Beyond the Glory's second season takes you inside the hidden world of sports the biggest stars. Here, Beyond the Glory, presented by Acura, Sundays at 8, only on Fox Sports Net. A lot of fighters in that one, a lot of football players. Lawrence Taylor, one of them with I liked a lot. I tell you, this round got off to a tremendous start. Both fighters came out and really put it on each other. Pretty even in that exchange. Tony was listening to uh, Freddie Roach in the corner. I think Freddie Roach has really become one of the outstanding trainers in the sport. Absolutely. In fact, uh, Fred, that the court? current issue of KO Magazine uh, calls him the Eddie Futch of the 21st century. And wow. What a compliment that is. the new breed of trainers, many of them. Uh, Buddy McGirt, another fine trainer yes. coming up. Yeah. Joe Goosen, Freddie Roach. Guys with a lot of years out in front of them now to, uh, to train fighters at a very high level. Roach was back in Atlantic City last night. 
and here today for this fight. So, an amazing turnaround. <laughs> Nothing is not dedicated. Tony's punch is caught on the arms of Robinson. These two body shots are pretty good, though. And Tony, this is typical of Tony because he has always been a fighter who likes to break down his opponent. He dissects them, uh, basically bury them, breaks them down bit by bit. I saw him do this even at, at the top of his game with a number of fighters. I think back again of the Prince Charles Williams fight, a typical example of that. James necessarily isn't a hurry fighter in that ring. The only time I ever saw him hurry was when he was fighting Tim Little at the Olympic Auditorium in Los Angeles, and he got badly cut at the end of the third round. The referee told him he was going to give him one more round, and that was it. And he went out and took care of business, and he stopped Littles in the fourth round. That was an amazing moment in the uh, career of James Tony. But other than that, he usually liked to do it little by little. Good right hand and left hand behind him. Nice combination by Tony. And Tony walked into a left hand of Robinson's. Tony covered up a little bit there for a moment. These guys are landing strong blows, Barry. These are uh, not pity pat punches. All right, up, up, step out, break. One of, one of the two punches, punches right there. Listen for the bell. A fighter. No, no, step in a little bit. But listen, I don't want you to step in front of you. Don't get this guy. This guy's going to go in desperate move any minute. And he's going to come at you and he's going to make a lot of mistakes. But maybe... That was the corner of Jason Robinson between rounds. Tony coming out all business here. I think Freddie Roach lit a fire for James Tony between rounds. They want Jason Robinson in the other corner to keep using the jab, but don't stand in front of Tony. Tony back into the wait for your man to come to you mode. So I'll give that angle again with a sidestep. Sean O'Grady's with Arnie Rosenthal in a corner now of Jason Robinson. Sean. Yeah, and good instructions over here, guys, from Arnie Rosenthal. What made you say not to, not to stand in front of Tony this way for Robinson? It's the plan. plan. Just keep moving, show him angles, keep that jab popping in his face, and take him into the deep water. He's following the plan perfectly. I can't ask for more. Coming into this fight, Arnie, you told me that you weren't you wasn't sure how Jason was going to react in this fight. A high, a high fight atmosphere, a lot of people, excitement, a lot of television. How's he doing? He's doing beautiful. No intimidation whatsoever. We're just 100% happy at this point. There's a lot of fight to go, though, Sean. As you know, this is scheduled for 12. Yeah, and you know how James Tony fights. He starts off kind of slowly, and then he builds to a crescendo. And he's an all-time pro. So. Yeah, and, and, and what do you do? How do you keep Jason this focused throughout this fight tonight? I think Tony will take care of that for us. Yeah. You just don't let up with James Tony. You have that man in front of you in the ring. You stay focused for 12 rounds. Oh, no you're joke. In trouble. Yeah, no joke. Otherwise, you're getting hurt. Uh, how do you keep him from kicking? <laughs> <laughs> we, we broke that habit a long time ago. Oh, but he might want to now. All right. That's it. Arnie Rosenthal. Jason Robinson, he likes what he sees. Yeah, pretty good idea, I think, Rich. I mean, he's going in here with a, an idea of uh, how his man could best win this fight. Take him into deep water, he said. Well, I think Robinson's fighting a great round here. He's been on the move just a little bit, just enough to keep Tony off balance, flashing out that right jab. Tony hasn't been able to find him with too much in this round. But James just keeps trudging ahead. Looking to wear out, out Robinson, but Robinson looks very calm and poised in there, fighting a good game plan. There he is. Tony getting a little bit more in the punching range, though. Tony kind of walked away in disgust that time. I wonder if Tony might have hurt, hurt his hand or something. in this round. He's been out hustled by Robinson in this round. Good right hand right there by Tony. Oh, and another one right on the button. And Robinson stays. It's just the same old. 
Tony is the great practitioner, turning the shoulder and the right hand follow, the counter. That's what we described for you earlier, and you just saw the prime example of it. And then it was another one right after that, too. Robinson actually didn't take a backward step. But his corner was all over for standing in front. Now, I tell you, I still gave that round to Robinson. Even though I know the judges won't. <laughs> Well, he had fought a tremendous round until then. I think Jason Robinson clearly won the first two minutes and 50 seconds of the round. But that was the best single punch of the fight. That was a hard, smashing right by James Toney. So whether or not it won the round for him, it did some damage. James is so cute in there, I'm telling you. You just saw that move we talked about, that turning of the shoulder and coming right back with the counter right. I don't know that anybody's done it better really in the last 10 years than James Tony. Uh, he's very crafty. Robinson is letting Tony into his punching range more now. Now that would be disastrous for him. He needs to keep him out of the end of his punches, just like that. You know, I don't think he can be right here for Robinson. Right hand. Tony's looking for that counter right. Just an uppercut. Robinson looks just a tad head little hesitant this round after eating that right hand in the last round. Trying to get that jab to work to good effect. Left hand by Robinson in close quarters. Right hand by Tony, not quite as solid as the others. Whoa, 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 let him out, let him out. Stop punching, whoa, stop, step. Break. Again, Tony giving him a lot of different angles, but not a bad round for Robinson again. And there's a right hand, and that is going to drop Robinson. Just like that. That caught him right on the chin. Five, six, seven, eight. Let me go across the glass. Watch to me. Come here. Time. Well, it came right at the end of the round again. Two rounds in a row. And we told you he was loading up with the right hand, that he's been looking for the right hand. He found it several times in the round before that. And then the tremendous booming shot by James okay, lights out Tony and it was almost lights out for Jason Robinson there. Knockdown. Robinson had fought a nice round. There you see the right hand back into the ropes. Tony senses the predicament immediately. Pat Russell, good job of refereeing, got Tony out of the way immediately. Oh, there he is, a beautiful counter right. It's what we've been talking about the whole fight. Tony looking for it and finally found it in the big way. There's the punch, the lead by Robinson, the counter right from Tony. Mouthpiece ends, the follow-up shot, and then good refereeing by Pat oh, Russell to get between them. Now Robinson a big wipe in, in that corner. deep I need trouble all that water here. Gone. Still doesn't seem 100% back yet, Robinson. And Tony comes right after, hits him with the right hand, and another right hand. Tony being aggressive in this round, not waiting. Oh, big right hand. I tell you, this is... This is a one-punch fight in terms of what, how Tony can win it with the counter rights. He's destroying Jason right Robinson corner. with right hands. He's found the man's weakness, exposed it. Look at him turn his shoulder. He's ready to launch that right hand again. I'm just waiting on it. You can just see. Robinson working the jab. Going to be a little more hesitant with that left hand, Will Robinson. I'm looking at his legs. They're not all there, Barry. Oh, 
slapping right hand that time by Tony. Wonder why Robinson run up there. He had Tony backing up for a second, then he just backed off. Stay away for 12 rounds. Yeah, not a bad idea. Also, Robinson seems to be pushing his punches a little bit more in this round. Sean O'Grady? Oh, experience is a great teacher, huh? See what James Tony did? He took Jason Robinson out to the deep water and then he drowned him. What he did is he, he took Jason Robinson's punches early. He rolled his shoulders, he turned, he yeah, timed right. it properly, took his time, and then when the window was open, he was going to The window was open, now it's closed again, but when it was open, he was really trying to go for the tail. Guys? He's still kind of playing coy here, is Tony. So shake his knees, an old trick that Sugar Ray Leonard used to do. But he hasn't really gone for the gusto in this round. And Robinson has done a nice job, at least to this point. Tony just happened on his own way. That was just kind of playing with Robinson this round. Cat with a mouse. Left-handed at times, there, Barry. He said most of the time in the early going, really was not an effective move for him. But he just—he does it just to show him different looks. Yeah, exactly. He's a pro. There's no question about it. He's gonna bounce back pretty good in that last round. I really didn't think the way the previous round ended that he'd be able to make it through another round. I didn't either. I just thought that Tony kind of played with him a little bit in that round. But that may have cost Tony the round, but he seems a little more intent on business here in round seven. Let's go back into the corner now of Jason Robinson. Sean O'Grady is back for Arnie Rosenthal. Sean? Thanks, guys. Arnie, in the fifth round, Jason down on the canvas. He got up the camera, had a better sixth round than obviously the fifth. What did you do to keep him going in this fight? Uh, he's got a great... Focus I mean, the focus is there, like I said from before. Yeah. But he's got the heart of a lion right now, and he's starting to come back here. But he he lost that focus for that split second, and Tony fought 10 seconds of that round, and that was the 10 seconds he caught him in. The window of opportunity was open, and uh, Tony really tried to go for it. That's why he's seeing Tony. How, how is his, his response between rounds? How, how does he seem? Fine. Seems like he's in this fight? Absolutely. What do you try to do to him at this point? What do you try to get him to do? Get back on the game plan that won the first four rounds for him. Which is? Stick and move. Move to your right and not drop your left hand like that. All right, I think he heard that. Jason Robin, they don't want him dropping his hands. You got to remain focused, guys. He's, and he still is dropping his hand a little bit. Not just in front. He just seems to have no defense for the counter right of Tony. And Tony is not throwing it a lot, but when he does, it's with intent. Tony's left hand has not been real effective in this fight. No, he's throwing it more now. It's almost like, let me just see if I can get this working.
Well, and he's just a pro. I mean, but there's no question about it. It looked like he could do what he wanted when he wanted. You were saying earlier that round the left hand wasn't working too well. Well, guess what? <laughs> That's what he ended it with, baby. And when he got rocked by a right hand by Robinson, he, he just knew he wasn't hurt. He just didn't look hurt. And it took about 20 seconds to finish the job. Just a quick little wake-up call. That, you know, you don't have to be that cute, James, all the time. Get your mind back on business, which is what he did. He flashed before that final finishing left hook. He flashed a couple. Lights out of Juro. I'm coming for you, baby. You ain't able to pump. You've been ducking me for two years. Now it's time to put up a shut up. Bottom line. What, what about this fight tonight? Oh, Jason what? was strong, man. Jason was a good fighter. Don't take nothing wrong. For, I don't take nothing away from this guy. He was strong, soft Paul, rangy fella. He was trying to stay with him in the power, but, you know, it took me for rounds to figure him out. But when I got to him, boom, Freddie said, Turn, throw the right hand to the body and come up to the left hook. And he didn't pay his electric bill, so his life went Oh, right. yeah, but he, he smacked you a couple of oh, times. No, no, did, no, make, no. did that make you mad? Don't get it. Hey, see, John, don't get it twisted out there. The, the yeah. time he's punched me, he so called smacked me, and he pushed me. Oh, he pushed look at, you. Look at the did, that, did that make you, did that that you or? Yeah, it makes me mad because that, that makes the judge think he hit me. Could but it? you look at my face, 71 professional fights, I don't have a mark on me. Now what? It looked as though I want to thank the IBF, Goose Tutor, Just Sports, Goose Tutor, they had Goose for them one my promoter, because the man believed in me. And the rest of the promoters out there who dissed me and said I wasn't going to do nothing, y'all can do, but you know what? You look as though, you look, you look as though you're, you're ready for anything. Let's take a look at the knockdown here. Yeah, we're, we're taking a look at, at, at when you put Jason down. Oh. What, what were you thinking? I know a window of opportunity was open. Well, what was first going time, through your mind? Yes. First, time was, first time was a big right hand. But I didn't get to finish him with the left hook because the bell came. And I could let him go. Then Freddie said, come on, jump on him. I heard everybody say, jump on him. I tried to jump on him. He was a survivor. And he kept, you know, I'd say he's a softball. He's real, he real, he real cagey. A little bit more season, he's going to be all right. He's going to be something. Y yes, but at the end of the fifth round, when you knocked him down, you came out in the first of the sixth round. We were trying to catch him.